Thank you very much, Chairman Wicker, Co-Chairman Smith, Ranking Member Cardin, Senator Gardner, and distinguished commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to testify at this hearing. Today we are speaking about the violations of the OSCE principles and commitments by the Russian Federation in the illegally occupied regions of Georgia, and I feel that this is a quite appropriate topic of discussion, not only because 10 years have passed since the Russia-Georgia war when Russian Federation invaded and occupied two Georgian regions, but also because Russia continues its aggressive policy aimed at redrawing the borders and retaining the so-called zones of influence. As Chairman Wicker, you have rightfully mentioned, the undermines the security and peace in Europe and creates a very dangerous environment that, if not appropriately countered, may lead to developments in the region that will be hard to reverse. In my remarks today, I will briefly introduce you to the situation in the Georgian regions illegally occupied by the Russian Federation. I would also like to draw your attention to the humanitarian, social, and other costs that Russian Federation and its occupation has imposed on people residing in the occupied and adjacent areas. And I will conclude my remarks highlighting the year's role. Since 2008, the Russian Federation is in breach of full spectrum of the principles of Helsinki Final Act of the Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe, such as sovereignty and territorial integrity, inviolability of frontiers, refraining from the threat or use of force, refraining from making each other's territory the object of military occupation, refraining from any demand for or act of seizure or usurpation of territory of another state, the human rights violation, and many, many more. Through these 10 years, Russian Federation has intensified its illegal steps toward factual annexation of Georgian regions of Abkhazia and Tsinvali. Moscow has further continued the implementation of so-called integration treaties absorbing Georgia's occupied regions into Russia's military, political, economic, and social systems. In gross violation of all international obligations, Russian Federation reinforces its military presence and occupation having illegally stationed fully operational military bases with 10,000 militaries, 3,000 FSB personnel, sophisticated offensive weaponry, constantly conducting military drills and violating Georgian airspace. At the same time, Russian Federation intensifies the installation of barbed wire fences and other kind of artificial barriers along the occupation line. The total length of barriers reached 49 kilometers alongside the occupation line in Abkhazia and 52 kilometers along the occupation line in Tsilvai region. Against this background, the EU monitoring mission deployed in Georgia on the basis of ceasefire agreement is not allowed by the Russian Federation to enter the occupied regions to fully implement its mandate throughout the whole territory of Georgia. The human rights situation remains alarming, with fundamental rights of local population infringed on a daily basis against the backdrop of intensified ethnic discrimination, restriction of free movement, illegal detention and kidnappings, deprivation of property rights, prohibition of education in native language, and other ethnically based violations, the local population is deprived of minimal safeguards for their lives. Murder of ethnic Georgians by the representatives of occupation regime has become a dangerous trend. We all remember the killings of Basharuli, Otkhozoria, Tatunashvili, and all these cases, despite cooperation by the government of Georgia in the relevant formats, the questions still remain unanswered and the perpetrators unpunished. This makes crystal clear that the occupation regimes in Sohumi and Skinvali not only strengthen the sense of impunity, but also further encourage ethnically targeted violence and crime against Georgian population. In this regard, on the basis of resolution of the Parliament of Georgia, Otkhozoria Tatunashvili list was adopted that includes the persons convicted of gross human rights violations in the occupied regions. Georgian government seeks from its partners the imposition of sanctions on the persons included in the list. With these provocative steps, Russian Federation tries to undermine the efforts of Georgia and its international partners for peaceful conflict resolution. Nevertheless, throughout the last several years, the government of Georgia has, pursuing, has been pursuing peaceful conflict resolution policy unwaveringly. Unlike Russian Federation, we remain in full compliance with the EU-mediated 2008 ceasefire agreement. 
We have reconfirmed our adherence to the non-use of force principle, still awaiting for the reciprocity from the Russian Federation. We pursue the policy of dialogue with the Russian Federation aimed at de-escalation of tensions. Reconciliation and engagement policy remains our priority, and we have even reinvigorated efforts by presenting new opportunities through the new peace initiative, a step to a better future. The document is distributed for your attention. At the same time, international support is decisive in order to succeed peaceful conflict resolution process, and I will be happy to elaborate on this more during the question and answer session. While talking on peaceful conflict resolution in Georgia, I should emphasize that the United States has a particular role in this process as our strategic partner Partic and a participant of Geneva International Discussions. We greatly value the U.S.-Georgia partnership and contribution of the United States in peace and stability in Georgia. On a political level, Georgia enjoys a widespread bipartisan support across the U.S. government, Congress, and administration. The Georgia-U.S. bilateral relation has never been stronger and continues to strengthen under the current administration, which has repeatedly stated its opposition to the Russian occupation of Georgian territories, as well as strong support for Georgia's NATO integration. The U.S. Congress has been always vocal on these very important to Georgia matters. In June, Bi Bipartisan Georgia Support Act was introduced in U.S. Congress by Congressman Paul and Connolly. We greatly appreciate the recent bipartisan resolution authored by Senators Perdue, Isaacson, and Cardin, marking the 100th anniversary of the first Democratic Republic of Georgia. We appreciate inclusion of Georgia language supporting territorial integrity issues in the Consolidated Appropriations Act and National Defense Authorization Act. It is the time that this political support is further reinvigorated in practical steps in order to ensure the implementation of ceasefire agreement and comprehensive peaceful settlement in my country. We believe through consistency and hard work we can lay the ground for lasting peace and security in Georgia. In this regard, I would like to emphasize the necessity of the peaceful conflict resolution to be placed high in the international arena as well as in the U.S. dialogue with Russia. Strong leadership of the United States is essential to reach progress in the resolution of the Russia-Georgia conflict. We deem it crucial that international society doesn't keep a blind eye on Russia's aggressive actions with regard to the occupied territories of Georgia and severe security and humanitarian situation on the ground that this policy entails. Firm stance of the international society and particularly the United States is decisive to send a clear message to Russia that this policy directed against sovereignty and territorial integrity of Georgia is not acceptable. Let me once again thank the Commission for organizing this hearing, and I'm looking forward to hearing from Luke Coffey and Damon Wilson, who I thank wholeheartedly for their input and long-time interest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador.